In chapter 9, we'll be discussing water and minerals. The first part of the chapter, water, will be discussed this week, and next week we will discuss minerals. Water's function is very important to the body because otherwise, if we don't have enough, we will have dehydration, which means we have a depletion of water. And in severe dehydration can be life-threatening. Hypothermia, where we have very high blood temperature, can also occur with dehydration. Water is obviously H2O. It has hydrogen and oxygen, and it is easily absorbed, and about 50 to 75 percent of our body weight is made up of water. It's essential for life. Without water, death can occur in as little as one to two weeks. Table 9.2 discusses the functions of water. It acts as a solvent in the body. It's a component of blood and saliva, sweat, tears, mucus, and joint fluid. It helps to remove wastes, transport substances, lubricate tissues, regulate body temperature, digest foods, and maintain proper blood pH. So you can see why it's imperative to life. With, as, as a water-soluble substances move within watery solutions by diffusion, movement from regions of a higher to lower concentration occurs, and water helps with this transport. Osmosis is movement of a solvent such as water through a permeable membrane. Water distribution can occur intracellular as well as extracellular. So intracellular is within the, the uh, cells and extracellular is surrounding the cells or in the blood or plasma. About two thirds occur within the cells. So you need to have a balance of intra and extracellular fluid and that has to do with sodium and potassium and different ions that help with that um, balance. You need to maintain proper hydration. And hydration refers to the water status in the body. If there's a shift in the ion concentration, that can affect hydration. So total water in intake comes from different things. It's not just water that you drink out of the tap. It can be beverages like tea and coffee containing water and lots of food. The fruits and vegetables are mainly made of water. And then we also have metabolic water, which is formed by cells. We can also lose water through urine, perspiration, exhalation, and our feces. And so we have to have a constant balancing act between the water that we take in and the water that we lose. So we want to have about an average of about two to five quarts a day. That's about the average of fluid balance with regard to intake and fluid lost. If you're a young woman, about 11 cups a day is needed, and young men, 15 to 0.5 cups a day is needed. Now remember, that can be taken in different forms, not just water that you drink, but water contents of foods and other beverages. This is a great picture that shows the um, intake and output of water and about how, it, how you balance that between the foods you eat, your metabolic water, the foods you drink, and how you... Uh, get rid of water through expired air and sweating and urine and feces. Kidneys are very important in regulating the water in the body and it helps with uh, filtering ions from the blood, removes drugs and, and metabolic wastes. And that has uh, two kidneys that are very involved in conserving water known as antidiuretic hormone and aldosterone. Diuretics are actually drugs that people take to increase urine output if they are retaining too much, but they also can be formed in dietary products known as uh, caffeine and alcohol. So naturally they occur in caffeine and alcohol, but you can also take them in a drug form to help with reducing fluid. Dehydration happens when you know, the body fluids losses are greater than what it takes in. And weight loss can be a sign of that. So if you lose fluid, and it could be through sports, through heat, maybe you have a virus where you're vomiting, but any kind of body fluid loss of 1% to 2%, you will already start noticing that you're getting tired and that you're thirsty. 4%, you start losing muscular strength. 7 to 10%, you're very weak. And 20% dehydration can lead to coma and death. People at risk for dehydration are older people. Infants, babies can uh, dehydrate quickly. Sick people and athletes. Can too much water be toxic? Absolutely. Now, sometimes we think that 
having water is really good and healthy, and so if we have the more we have, the better. But if you drink too much too soon, you can oversaturate the body, and the kidneys have a difficult time filtering the water from the blood. So excess water can dilute the sodium concentration, and you can have a hyponatremia, which is a condition where your sodium gets so diluted, and you can end up having uh, dizziness, headache, confusion, bizarre behavior, and ultimately can lead to death. You've heard of people that have been, um, you know, water intoxication that occurred even in, in fraternities where they just force you to drink so much water at one time, and, and that can, you know, people have died from that. So what is better for you, bottled or tap water? Well, the answer is that depends. First of all, you know, taste preferences and convenience are big things to determine whether or not you're going to drink bottled versus tap water. Bottled water is expensive and it's unnecessary unless your water supply is not um, filtered properly or you don't have it. Somehow you can't get water. Uh, maybe you have a water pump in your house to, and it's hit by you know electricity or electricity goes out and you can't get water from your tap so you need to have bottled water. So bottled water is by FDA definition intended for human consumption that's in sealed containers, has no added ingredients and, um, you know, except for something that will prevent growth and bacteria. And the FDA, you know, regulates bottled water to make sure there's, you know, the levels are, there's no contaminants that can harm you and it can be sampled and analyzed. And if it proves to be safe, then the FDA will put its stamp of approval on it. Is tap water safe? You know, yes, there's a safe drinking water act that requires water to go purification processes. So it's safe, but when in doubt, you could always boil water for 10 minutes to make sure that you're killing any microbes, microorganisms. Table 923 looks at different classifications that the FDA uses for water. So you want to take a look at that. And although bottled water is safe, the plastic use can be toxic. So BPA is a toxic that is found and it can ultimately affect human health. So you want to make sure that you don't let water in a plastic bottle get heated. So if you leave it in your car and it's sitting in the sun, it can leach some of that BPA into the water and be hazardous for your health. So be careful, be smart about choosing the water that you drink and make sure that you're getting plenty of water every day to create the balance that we need for health.